The FAA has made significant changes to the way that a commercial drone pilot requests Part 107 airspace authorizations and waivers. Previously, although airspace authorizations were submitted through an online form, the manner in which this is done has been massively simplified. Now, the FAA has moved all Part 107 information to something that they call the Drone Zone. If you Google FAA Drone Zone, this website will be one of the first responses. The beauty of this website is that it includes all information you need to get started and provides some tips on generally where to fly and safety. But then, once you sign up for an account, it also provides a portal for you as a licensed Part 107 pilot. Once you create your account and log in, you can review your registered users and drones, waivers or authorizations that you have pending, as well as those that have been granted or any that have been denied. We are now looking at my FAA Drone Zone dashboard, and as you can see, I have had a request denied. This happens when you're testing the boundaries of waivers for things such as night flights or beyond visual line of sight. Additionally though, I currently have an airspace waiver that was granted to me prior to the creation of the Drone Zone, so these do not show up on this dashboard. Instead, the FAA provides you with an email and a PDF of the approval. It's also worth noting that you are able to get airspace authorizations for individual flights through the FAA's Lance system, which provides for immediate approval of requests from mobile devices. Because Cincinnati International Airport was one of the test airports for the rollout of this system, I have had the opportunity to be granted numerous airspace authorizations through this system. Once it is rolled out to all airports nationwide, it'll be a game changer because approval is literally instantaneous. I'll cover the Lance system later. Finally, from this dashboard, you can report any accidents to the FAA. Luckily, I've not had to make use of this feature. From here, you can click where it says Create Part 107 Waiver slash Authorization, and it'll bring up three options. The first is Operational Waivers, which involve a waiver of all of the Part 107 operational rules not dealing with airspace. This includes operations at night, from a moving vehicle, beyond line of sight, over people, etc. The second option is for airspace authorization, which should be sought in situations where you'll need to fly in classes B, C, D, or E airspace. Choosing this option will allow you to get authorization for a flight. The third option then for an airspace waiver may seem a bit confusing, but this option can be sought by commercial drone pilots who will need to fly in a given airspace over and over again and don't want to have to seek permission each time as the process can often take a few months to get approval. This way, a pilot can simply request a waiver for flight operations in a given airspace for up to two years without having to go through this process each time. So here, we're going to walk through an airspace authorization by clicking the radio button and then start application. This first page simply requires you to include your name and contact information, which will already be filled in with the information you use to create your account. You will also give this request a title. Here, we'll just call it Test Authorization and click Next. The next page is where you will fill out all of your information about your request. The dates and times you will need authorization, how often, the location, proposed flight altitude, and a description of the services you will be providing. You will click the Next button, which will give you the ability to review the information you've provided, and then you will submit. Once it has been submitted, you can simply return to your dashboard and see if and when your request has been approved or denied and the reasoning for the approval or denial.